Here we'll be looking at some of the fallacies that are often used when discussing probability. Some of these fallacies are particularly insidious because they're often hidden by rhetorical tricks and presentations that don't even mention probability. You could be reading an article that talks, seems to talk only about logic or possibilities, but it's actually sneaking in a probability argument in the middle of it. First, as an intro, here's the probability line from 100%, which is certain, and 0%, which is impossible. There are, next to these, we have things like 99.9 .9 and 0, 0.00, etc., which are almost certain or almost impossible. I'll argue later that actually the difference between certainty and almost certainty is, in, actually, is indeed very small. Things that are certain are things like 2 plus 2 equals 4 or energy conservation in modern physics. Things that are almost certain are the fact that you won't win the lottery. You especially won't win the lottery if you haven't bought a ticket, but even if you've bought a ticket, the odds against you winning are huge. What things are impossible? Well, it's entirely symmetric. If something is certain or almost certain, its negation is impossible or almost impossible. And then we have the range in the middle from, say, 65 to 35 of things that could really go either way. Um, there are three different reasons that something can be in this uh, range, and it's important to not mix them up. The first reason is that we have no evidence one way or the other, such as the gender of the first president of Pluto. A second reason it could be in this range is that we have weak evidence, such as the gender of the US president in 2037. We can come up with arguments and present some evidence, but it's really not pushing us strongly towards either end. And the third reason is that we could have finely balanced evidence, like our current belief as to the gender of the US president in 2017. There is quite strong arguments pushing in one direction, and quite strong arguments pushing in the other, and they are currently roughly balanced in the 65 to 35% range. It's important to keep in mind the difference between this because, for instance, when there's no evidence, then the slightest piece of evidence will start you push you, send you careening in one direction or the other, whereas if we have strong balanced evidence, then one extra piece of evidence shifts very little. Let's have a look at the, the certain versus almost certain. I said that energy conserved is definitely certain and you not winning the lottery is almost certain. One is logical certainty or almost and the other one is just empirical. But the difference is less than it may seem. Energy is conserved, yes, but in our current models of physics, it's conditional on these models being right. What chance do you give of our current models being entirely correct about this? Do you think there's a higher chance that there might be a mistake or that we'll discover something new or that you'll actually get the lucky numbers? Suppose I added to the fact that actually general relativity doesn't really have conservation of energy in the way we understand it. No one's found a way to use it to get perpetual motion, but it still kind of violates conservation of energy or doesn't really have it as a strong internal symmetry. You might feel that on the other hand, things like two plus two equals four are a completely different category. They are logical certainties. So they, maybe energy conserved is dropped down to almost certain, but two plus two equals four is 100%. Maybe, but here's another logical fact. The 10 trillionth digit of pi is apparently nine. A supercomputer has found that. This is also a logical fact, but what are the chances that the programmers made a mistake when programming the computers? There is an error in the algorithm. Some bit of the math there was wrong. Again, this is formally of the same logical level of certainty, but it's obvious that actually the chance 
of getting it wrong is higher than zero. So don't get too focused on the 100% or 0% end of the scale. Most things that you think live there actually are in the 99.9 .9 or 0.001. They are not uh, qualitatively different from probabilities spread across the range. Okay, here are some of the common fallacies. The first one, it's not certain, hence it's impossible or almost impossible. I've seen it written in various forms. As I say, it's often done in such a way to obfuscate the fact that probabilities are being used. It makes it sound like a logical statement. It is, however, completely wrong because it says that you are not here. And from that, it concludes that you are over there. For probabilities, the options are spread across the whole range of the thing. Showing that something is not certain is doing practically nothing. We don't know, hence it's impossible. This is often done with futuristic technologies like, say, AI developments, where we say, we don't know when it could happen, so we're not going to worry about it. Uh, it'll, it certainly won't be in our lifetime, or arguments of that type. But where does the certainty of not being in our lifetime come from? That's a strong statement. Anyway, this is making an even more egregious error than the first because it's saying it lies in this range, which is what we don't know means, and concluding from them that it lies over here, which is what impossible means. A third fallacy that is often comes up, there is evidence against it, and then the article lists all the evidence against it. Hence, we can dismiss it, it's almost impossible. But all that this does is lists some evidence that push the probability in that direction. In order to show that it's almost impossible, we need to show that there is no counterbalancing uh, evidence pushing in the other direction. So you need to thoroughly review everything that is known. Finally, there are many versions of it's impossible in my model, hence it's almost impossible. Often the model is implicitly used or is just assumed to be correct. But all that this statement does, if true, is that it sets the probability of the thing being possible to something a bit lower than the probability of the model being wrong. And there is always a probability that the model will be wrong. Anyway, these are the common fallacies uh, used when reasoning with probabilities. As I say, they're most often used in articles that don't mention probabilities at all. Thank you for listening.